Hello there, Taurus. Welcome to your reading. And uh, let's jump into your reading here. When I was shuffling out the spread, I saw a little, uh, like five, maybe four, four flashes of uh, images. I, uh, the images weren't moving, but um, I saw four flashes. So j let me just uh, convey that information. So first of all, um, I see this person on a, um, what are those, th those floating things? In, a, in, in the ocean, it's like really clear blue water, uh, warm weather, and you know, the sun is shining. It, it looks almost like a tropical paradise, but um, it seemed like just a picture to me. And so this person is on this flotation device, kind of sprawled out. He's wearing uh, board shorts and he's got like a margarita or some type of a drink in his hand. He's wearing sunglasses. He's uh, not wearing a shirt. So he's just, you know, drifting in this really, I want to say, serene, safe place, okay? So that screams out to me emotional safety, emotional safety. I feel like you're in a position right now where you're free to express yourself. You feel very uh, at ease with another person where, you know, the, the water in the background, it's like, it's like feeling like you belong, feeling like whatever has happened, it doesn't matter because you feel at ease, you feel at peace and you feel like you belong. Um, the second thing that I saw here is um, I'm seeing this flower. It's like, it looks like a, one of those daisy. Um, it ha it, it's colorful. I, I can't remember the name, but um, there's a butterfly landing on it and it's like a really beautiful flower. This is a really butterfly, a beautiful butterfly and the flower is like pink and red and an orange mixture of those uh, colors and the butterfly is kind of like on the um, opposite end of the color spectrum, blues and greens and violets. So I feel like something is complementary when I saw that. It's like complementary. The flower is lacking this, the butterfly has this. The f uh, butterfly is lacking this and the flower has these spectrums of the, the color spectrum. And uh, you know, uh, insects fertilize as well. So I definitely feel like there's a sense of fertilization or, or fertile or, you know, meeting something or a situation or being in a situation that is, that feels very fertile, that there's room for growth, that is very complementary to whatever it is that you feel you might be lacking, okay? And then the third thing that I saw is, it's actually, this, this, this is a moving reel. I see two horses. You have so many imageries, I don't understand why. Um, you have two, these two horses. Uh, one is gray, gray, black, shiny. Um, the other one is white. And they're both uh, galloping down this meadow. And there are trees on either side and there are grass and flowers and things like that. And the, they're both walking. And the white horse stops and uh, see these, these berries. These, um, they look like wild berries. And so the horse stops and, you know, takes a bite out of these berries and the black horse is looking at the white horse. And it seems almost like they have human emotions because I'm looking at the black horse, looking at the white horse and the black horse has like these uh, doe-like loving eyes towards the white horse. Okay, so that screams out to me like affection, um, feeling like it's almost like this, you know, in, in intense emotion for another person. It's not just sexual. It's like really caring about the other person, enjoying the way that they move, um, seeing them in a very innocent way. It's, it's almost like every gesture, it, it's, it's almost like taking in every gesture, every movement and being in, 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 being almost like captivated by another person based on the simplest gesture that they do. Okay. And then the last thing that was, was that th three? Yeah. So the last thing that I'm seeing here, um, which is odd in opposition to the other three things, I see this man, um, he looks like very old and he's holding onto his stomach. He's a, he's kind of like, um, leaning over a little bit and he's holding onto his stomach and 
like he has stomach cramps or stomach pains but what it feels like is and i'm not sure but it feels to me like um you know how the the butterfly imagery comes back so it's like feeling in the pit of your stomach that butterfly that mixture of excitement and also apprehension so it's like a little bit of worry but also a little bit of excitement that that it's also like nausea is what i'm feeling i don't know if some of you are pregnant or some of you are like uh, experiencing nausea um you know it could be because of a pregnancy but then i feel like it's more of a um emotional thing that's triggering some physical things okay and you know Taurus you guys are very physical people you know uh, the way you think the way you do things you trust what is physically present so I feel like the ways in which you might um, the way in which you experience love and emotions might be the pit of through the pit of your stomach I feel like it takes something physical for you to be able to feel emotions that's what it feels like to me so what I'm saying is you might, you know, like uh, go through the motions and, and feel like, yes, somebody compliment um, compliments me, um, compliments in a, um, with the E, okay? So they, they're complimentary to you. Not that they compliment you, they, they're complimentary to you. Uh, they're kind of like the yin to your yang. And you, you just like, okay, well, that's nice. And then uh, you find yourself looking or staring at this person a lot and you're like, oh, I'm just, you know, fascinated by their beauty. But then I feel like it takes that physical kind of like that hit to the stomach, that butterflies to the pit of your stomach, that sense of uh, excitement and nausea and, and, and just mixed emotions for you to, it, it's like drilling at home or hitting you at your core for you to realize, oh my gosh, I'm in love with this person. That's what it feels like to me, like all of those imageries, all of everything culminating. And then you see this guy, he's older, he's hunched over, he's holding his stomach. And it's like something is finally, finally, finally hitting home for you. Okay, so let's go into this reading. I'm seeing for some of you, there is a sense of guilt here. Okay, and um, based on the spread. Um, I'm just gonna uh, I'm gonna draw on the the feelings because I, I'm not going to you know go through the cards but um, I'll, I'll just point out the stuff that matters um, that way I don't lose track of the, the the feelings that are coming through because I kept mentioning for you guys for the past few months you have been hiding and bottling in your emotions okay and it's almost like um, you're distracting yourself with other things in order to not feel something. And then I also feel like you're blocking people out that really care about you. You're inadvertently as well blocking or even, you know, purposely blocking out people that you feel things for. And so when we talk about the spread, I don't feel like it's meaningful to talk about the cards and the energies. I feel like I just have to go off my gut instincts on this. Um, I do see a little bit of guilt here. And I feel like you're looking at the past over a situation where there was a considerable amount of guilt. And um, I feel like for some of you, this is like the, the guilty feeling. You might be in a relationship and you feel something for somebody outside of the relationship. That comes up. You could also be feeling guilty like, oh, I'm not sharing the, the responsibilities with my partner or I'm not sharing the brunt of the work. I'm not doing the, the necessary work that is required of me. Hence, there is some sense of guilt. OK, let me, you know, buckle down. Let me ask them what they need. Let me see how I can offer my services or my time or my energy or my resources to balance this situation out. So some of you have been feeling sort of like I haven't been focusing on what people need me. I've just been so absorbed in my own things that I am now realizing I'm neglecting the things that matter to me and so let me just you know snap out of my little reverie and just um, put in my my work 
I feel like for some of you, it took the absence of another person in order for you to start to kind of like snap out of it and, and kind of look around and, and just, you know, um, be awakened to the fact that you might not have done the work in, in, in some areas of your life that is necessary, okay? Uh, for some of you, I feel like, you know, you have been, you, you have a relationship, there are parenting situations that need to be worked out, or, you know, the, 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 parent, the, the roles of parenting, who's picking up the kids, who's cooking dinner today, who's dropping them off, who's taking them to the ballet recital. There has been some type of a tug of war, tug of war between, you know, you and your partner regarding parenting. And now it's sort of like, okay, we, we need to step in. We need to work together. We need to, you know, you do this, I do that, and then get the situation sorted out. Okay. And then I also feel there, you're interested. You're very, very much enamored and just in love with somebody. I feel like this is somebody that is so in love with animals. So a lot of animals. Um, it, it's somebody that, you know, is very gentle, very uh, cuddly, uh, somebody who's, um, who's very innocent. They have this really, really innocent, pure, um, playful um, energy about them. They love animals. They love living things. And I feel almost like there's this immense sense of attraction, too. And um, horses, okay? So we have here the chariot. These two horses, unlike the uh, Rider Waite deck, these are the same colors, but from the imagery that I saw about the two horses galloping uh, in that meadow and eating berries, um, I don't know the significance of berries, but um, I feel like there might have there there might be some interracial attraction, and you know there's nothing wrong with that, but I feel like. It's not just interracial, it's sort of like somebody who is so different from you that there might be cultural barriers, okay? Um, they're so different from you too that that might be why they look so exotic or you, you stare at them a little bit longer because it's not something you're used to looking at every day, okay? So for example, if uh, you've only dated within your race and you see somebody that is outside of it, you're always going to be drawn to them because they represent to you something that is out of the norm or out of, or something that is exotic or something that is a novelty item to you. Just as this child has this little kitten and that's like, it's novel to him. Okay, he's like, look at this. He's showing everybody and, and, and things like that. So. I feel like you're dealing with someone who loves animals immensely, who has a really, really pure heart, who's very beautiful. Like, you know, beauty is very subjective, but I feel like this is somebody that garners a lot of attention when they walk around, when they're grocery shopping, they might get hit on. Um, when they're, you know, they, they turn heads, people stop and stare at them um, a few times. And um, I feel like, you know, this is somebody you're just like, I don't know if they're if, if they're out of my league. I don't know if they're interested in me. I don't know if you know if they find me attractive. So there's this sense here of uh, trying to spruce yourself up, or you know, being really mesmerized by every single action of this person. Looking at them, wanting to, wanting to kind of like, <laughs> wanting to what is the right word? How do I put this? You know, uh, in a clean way, like. It, trying to absorb everything that you see and you know tucking it away in the back of your mind so that when you're alone you can draw it back out and kind of relive that moment when you're with them it's that special and that sacred i i definitely feel many of you are are in a situation where you you, you start to feel that pain in your stomach that cramp in your side like wow, I'm actually really in love with this person. And that's really beautiful. So I feel like, you know, if you're coming to awareness about this situation, you kind of have to tell the other person how you feel, okay? 
So don't try to bottle things up. Don't try to push it aside because the, the, the stomach cramps and the pain will exacerbate. So let your feelings be known. Express them. Because I, I definitely feel reciprocity. I definitely feel that. Uh, we have here the Two of Pentacles and the Two of Cups. And um, I feel like, you know, whatever is uh, felt from your end with the pentacle suit is also felt from their end with the cup suit. So I, I feel like, you know, this, you're, you're in good hands, okay? So going back to that, um, is it first or second? Well, both of them, the, the man in the, the pool, in the floating thing, he's content with his little drink. And then the butterfly landing on that flower, it's a complementary, symbiotic complementary, um, reciprocal, um, and, and I feel like it just feels right. That's what it, it feels like to me. It just feels right. It's like being warm, being comforted, uh, finding something really beautiful, finding somebody really attractive, and just everything just feels right. It's like you're not only a good fit, you're very different from one another but you fit and mesh really well together. And so it just feels right. But I do definitely feel there might be third parties, you know, um, there might be third parties energies here. I, I feel that because with this Nine of Swords, I usually associate it as guilt. Like, it wasn't me, I didn't do it. You know, it, it's that, that guilt that preemptive guilt that makes you say, oh, it wasn't me, I, I, it wasn't me, okay, you're wrong. Um, so I feel like some of you could be in a relationship and you're lusting after another person and that's why you hold everything so tightly in and you, you keep everything so tightly wound up and that is why, you know, you, you steal glances, steal glances at the other person you don't say anything because you're in a relationship or they could be in a relationship and you both are aware of each other's relationship status so you look at them and then you kind of you know swirl that information the, the sight of them the smell of them the the sound of their laughter you swirl it away in the back of your mind so that you can retrieve it later it just feels to me like you have a love or an attract it's not just an attraction you have this love towards somebody and this love, you hold it in such a sacred place. That's what it feels like to me. It's all, everything is very delicate. Everything is very fragile. And you know, it, it's almost like dreamlike. And at any moment, this imagery could be shattered. That's what it feels like to me. Something is very, very delicate. It's like teeth teetering. Is it teetering on the brink? Like you can't push it too hard. You don't want it to tip over. You can't poke at it too much. You can't, you know, let yourself enjoy the moment because you feel like the other shoe's gonna drop. So there's a lot here about, you know, the emotional equilibrium. And I feel like you're just at that point where it's like, things are just perfect everything is just right the water temperature is just right the sun the the heat of the sun is just right the location and the person is just right so it's very beautiful Taurus but I definitely feel you know some of you could be in a third party type of an entanglement and that might be why you're not really expressing yourself um, what I have as well um, <clears throat> based on this imagery we have here the Two of Cups. And uh, the way it looks in this picture is uh, very different from the Rider Waite. But um, I feel like this is a, a very, very special spiritual union where, you know, two people could be very different, but there's a great amount of trust and there's a great amount of reciprocity. Okay, it's like meeting your kindred uh, soulmate, meeting your other half. And then we have here the Seven of Cups. Um, are they really interested in me? Am I good enough? If I give an offer, will it be accepted or will it be rejected? So there's a lot of apprehension, a lot of fantasies, a lot of just things playing out in the emotional realm that you're just very, very unsure about. And then I also feel like there is some type of a spunk or some type of a 
power dynamics, power differential, age gaps even in this relationship. And I know it looks really weird with this card, but what I'm seeing, what I'm looking at is uh, the chariot, you know, struggles, power dynamics and uh, moving in the right direction, waiting for that opportune mo moment when the two people are in alignment with each other. So then the, the situation can move forward. OK, and when it moves forward is going to be very, very, very fast. So if you're like, OK, um, I have to finish all these projects. I have to take this vacation. When I come back, then I'll let them know how I feel about them. And I feel like, you know, the projected time frame is going to be a lot faster than you you hope, okay? I also feel like movement and travels as well. If you are thinking about this person, if they're living at a distance, there's going to be a communion coming back together. I think of this as the Last Supper. There's going to be some type of a reunion or some type of a coming together. Uh, where one person is preparing their house for some type of a uh, homecoming, okay? So there's definitely that energy about anticipation. Um, I'm also seeing as well, we have the justice card here, uh, some type of a legal situation. It could be, you know, um, it doesn't have to be like court cases or something dramatic like that. But I, I feel like for many of you, you're in a situation where you're handling a lot of official documents. Official documents don't have to be legal. They can be, you know, um, just like uh, procedures and protocols as a job of your, uh, as a, um, as a function of the work that you do. Okay, so I see like um, memorandums. Um, I, I'm seeing like um, tax papers. I'm also seeing like. Um, court documents that belongs to somebody else that you have to look through and then I feel like you have to lay it out lay it all out on the table look at all the facts before you can make a conclusion or before you can draw a conclusion and I feel like I don't know why but I, I, I just feel like there's an energy here about the way in which we make these decisions uh, we think of it as, you know, everything is very objective, right? That That's the way that you guys work. Things have to be practical. Things have to be orderly. Things have to pass that common sense test. And things have to be backed up by evidence. That's the way you operate. But I feel like in this situation, they're, they're mentioning here um, the, the mirror, okay? The mirror. And it's sort of like past, present, future with this card where it's... It's almost like as much as we try to be very, very objective when we make decisions, our worldview is greatly shaped by our past experiences, our culture, our religious upbringing, our belief system, our childhood even. And so I feel like in a way, everybody's actions as much as they try to be sub, uh, objective and as much as we try to standardize and have one standard procedure for doing things, everyone interprets it differently because of their past experiences. And I feel like in this situation, um, there's something here about guilt. There's something here about, you know, feeling like you belong in this situation, feeling like something is really just, 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 just right. But it could be based on your past experiences where there has been some rejection, where there has been a situation where you might have dealt with third parties, for example, and it colors your worldview when you're looking at relationships, when you're looking at commitment, when you're looking overall at, let me lay out the facts. Why do I feel this certain way? Okay, and, I, and I, this is the week where I feel like something's going to hit you at that really, really strong gut level where feelings, your own feelings come to the surface, your own feelings get engaged and your own feelings are becoming known to you. Okay. So we're taking a different emotional path for this week and we're trying something brand new. And I feel like it's a beautiful kind of like awakening for you guys on the emotional level. Where have I, um, not been mindful of my responsibilities 
Um, where have I, you know, kind of pushed people away? Where have I not been as delicate or as emotional as I should have been? I feel like there is a, a dawning of a new day. We have the Fool and the Star. Lighting the way, okay? Showing the way so that the new start that you make is going to be the right path, okay? It's as simple as that. Let me see if there's any last minute um, things that I need to convey. I, I feel like, I feel like some of you are um, leaving a relationship. We have the justice card, which might indicate like um, legality as well, you know, separation and things like that. Um, I do see as well custody, you know, um, it's sort of like you might already be separated and now you're finally like getting divorced. I see some of you laying out, possibly consulting an, an attorney, laying out, you know, your assets, laying out everything that you own, trying to figure out if I do this, what does my financial future look like? If I do that, what does that look like? If I were to divorce? How much is, you know, the spouse, going, the ex-spouse is going to keep? And if I embark on this new path, you're, it's like you're, you're doing something to really free yourself from um, possibly a relationship. So, Taurus, I hope the reading is helpful for you. Um, I hope it resonates at least. Um, it looked really beautiful when I saw those images. It's like... You have this childlike innocence. Some, it, it's like somebody is sparking um, something within you to, to kind of like bring out this childlike innocence about you, this love for life, this lo thirst for adventure, and this amazing you know energy where there's like, it, it's like a feeling of safety in a relationship, okay? Um, so I do wish you all the best and um, I'll talk to you guys next month, okay? Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of January once again. If you are looking for a private reading, I'm not offering them at this time. I do have a colleague that I highly recommend. Her information and her scheduling website is in the uh, description box below. Take care of yourself. Talk to you soon.